blessed with really uh, in the in the nine years I've been here the four really talented athletic directors and uh, I could tell by the smiles in the room today and by the uh, just the energy in the room today uh, that Ward Manuel has quite a reputation preceding him and I think it's a very obviously uh, it's a very positive step for us and uh, hopefully bring us great stability in that area for a long, long time. So I uh, wish I could stay and, and get to know him better right now, but we have a 12 o'clock game in Madison Square Garden, a unique event with our uh, hockey team. Uh, we're going to embrace the experience by uh, obviously playing our game, let, give, giving the kids a little time in New York, and then also coming back for the hockey game and, and rooting for our fellow classmates. So uh, uh, Penn State, uh, as anybody could see when they went to Northwestern, uh, Northwestern has been very uh, tough to beat, uh, especially at home. Uh, Michigan State took care of it last night, but they've been very good, and, and uh, Penn State took care of their business there. Um, they are uh, obviously a, a good basketball team that is in transition with a lot of young players, great recruiting class, and uh, we're, uh, we're hoping it's, it's not going to be a home game. But it's, not, it's better than being in State College, that's for sure, because the, uh, I think we'll have a lot of Michigan fans, and uh, it's, a, it's certainly a unique event and one that we will, uh, we're, we're going to really embrace. So uh, Kara, my, the Karras update is Karras was able to do more yesterday than the day before. It was good to see him out there running around a little bit. Uh, but uh, as I said before, when you see him out there in warm-ups, that's when you know he's going to play. Lev, you want to start us off? Uh, Coach, just in terms of uh, Manuel, when were you made aware of that decision? And do you have any prior relationship with him? Any experience? Uh, I, I was made aware of it, you know, within the recent, you know, days or hours or whatever it would be. I'm not going to tell you when I heard, but yeah, recently. Uh, the, um, actually, Ward was the athletic director of a former player of mine, Reggie Witherspoon, who was the head coach at University of Buffalo. And Reggie had very good things to say about Ward when we talked prior to this whole process, prior to any but the job being open. He really, he knew he was a Michigan man and a lot of, a lot of respect for him. So uh, that's good. And I just, the first time I ever met him uh, uh, was in the, uh, in the Bahamas this year, that Connecticut was there and we spoke just for a minute as we were walking the mile long walk from our hotel to the arena. Uh, I walked that mile with him and it was good to, uh, to meet, meet him and speak with him. At that time, however, we had a sitting AD and Jim Hackett. Sure. Brandon? Mitch bringing stability to the athletic department. Uh, where does that stand in terms of what's transpired here in the past 14 months? Well, it, it's, uh, I think it's unique to have the situation, obviously, we have. How many times do you have a sudden departure of an athletic director in the middle of your football season? And so that one stung, and it was hard. And I, I you know, for everybody, and not just uh, Dave, all the, all our athletic department, and Jim Hackett was just absolutely incredible of coming in, you know, uh, just get making, providing smooth air for all of us as we went forward, and was uh, did he went about what what was really important, hire a great football co coach. Um, get to get to, with the apparel contract was a huge undertaking and he, he focused on what was really important and trusted the rest of his uh, his staff to, to keep this the uh, the athletic program going and it's, it's I think we're ready to really move right now with this new leadership obviously you guys are kind of isolated over over here you know because you're your thing and yeah. the athletic department isn't what an old athletic department looks like but um, in terms of Everyone needing a leader to identify with, um, you know, how, how just that's a hard thing to gauge up to, but how, how important is that to be established kind of right now for a program, a department that's really had kind of a lot yeah. of instability over 20 years? Uh, yeah, I think that Ward recognizes that and, and that he's going to uh, come in here and uh, I, I think probably take a really good look at what we have and try and bring stability throughout. And everyone's going to have to make their own little changes, I'm sure, in, in, in how we go about our business. Uh, but uh, I expect this to be similar to the smooth transition we had with, uh, with Jim Hackett. He sensed, here's what we need. We need to just to all get together on the same page and move in the same direction. And, uh, and 
words. I just was, I really felt comfortable after listening to him today and then talking with the people who know him obviously much better than I. Chris? Oh, Karis, was he cutting? Was he doing some practice stuff with you guys? He was just... doing more than he was doing the day before. Okay. Uh, in terms of with the team? He was doing himself. more than what he was doing okay. the day before. It's just Understood. this is an area I just cannot I tell you. You guys can ask every day. I'm not going to go okay. out there. It's not fair. Understood. And then um, what were the difficulties that you saw on film in the Rutgers game specifically? Oh, I, you know, we did not screen very well in this game. We did not do enough things with where we really um, uh, played efficient both defensively and offensively. Probably our defense was better than our offense. But offensively, we had to be more efficient in how we played. And, uh, you know, that's, that happens from time to time. And they just need to see it on film and say, wow, I, I did it like that. And so that, I think that was very helpful. You think, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is there um, an element of playing in a, in a venue like Madison Square Garden that, uh, uh, where the guys might get a little <coughs> more geared up than normal to play there or um, any concerns about adjusting? I think though, you know, we won't be able to do a shoot around. I think the Knicks play there tonight, and and with the early nature of the game, we would never do one no, no matter what. So we'll just get there an hour and a half. Usually we get to the game an hour and 15 minutes before, and that'll be an hour and a half, and just get get them up there. But I think that'll be. This is certainly a unique enough event that I don't think we have to worry about, uh, you know, having coming out of there without a lot of energy. Uh, like I said, I think we'll have a good crowd there as well, uh, supporting both Michigan and Penn State, and uh, it's going to it's going to be a good environment. I, I really look forward to that. Penn State or the Michigan, uh, the Big Ten is in the East to stay, as Jim Delaney is continues to stress, and this is another way that we we put a you know a, a stake in the Big e, in the in the in the East, and say we're we're in here. We got we have some teams over here, and this is going to be important that we. We see ourselves in this environment. Your reaction to the advantage that you get by having seven road games in a, in a conference schedule when everything's so tight? Yeah, I don't. You know, I I don't. I don't know if, if you'd have to ask Pat Chambers there about losing a home game, but I think there's times during the season that you know it probably doesn't make a difference. Like I I don't. Maybe if we had played Rutgers in the Garden, we had played would have played better the other day. Um, Rutgers could have beaten us. Who knows? Or they, they might have got too excited. So I, I, that's, that, I, I don't think we can really measure that significantly. What struck you um, when, when you played Penn State uh, previously about uh, what you were anticipating versus what you saw? Well, I, I think that no one knew at that time about Karras' injury. And we went out and our kids played with it, with it, a, a energy and, and, a, and a confidence that we have to, we, it's difficult to even, uh, cultivate in practice. It just it, it was one of those sudden change things that our kids just came out and just um, embraced this, the opportunity that they all had to play. And now that's that's not new. That's that's older. So we really played probably beyond uh, who we were at that time. And I'm sure uh, Penn State played below who they are. So m new game, new day. Everything's different. Back over to Chris, Coach. Jordan Morgan really improved defensively to the point where he knew where everybody should be on the floor. He's starting to see Mark Donnell yeah. improve in those areas. Yeah, he made some plays in the Nebraska game that are, were really positive. Uh, whether he's a block and a shot or just playing in the middle without without fouling, something that Ricky and Mo really have trouble doing right now. So uh, yeah, he's making big strides in that. He's got a long way to go. And as I said, this is the most difficult position to play defensively. The last line of defense, you have more calls than anybody. And it is not for the faint of heart. And it's got, there's got to be habits that you just can do, that comes over time. Um, Jordan Morgan got called out on a lot of film for his first two or three years of just not being at the right place at the right time and, and fatigue can set in. And now that he's playing 25 to 30 minutes, that can set in. So we've got to be very careful of that. Mark, 